the previous segment we discussed the amazing achievements of modern science which have caused more and more people to adopt a very strong faith in progress. Many people have become convinced that science works for the benefit of humankind and we just need scientists, uh, we just need to allow them to go on in working in their laboratories and research projects and they will create heaven here on earth. But if you think that science is simply working for the benefit of humankind, you don't understand much about the history of science or about uh, uh, how, what science is doing today. Many th scientists are certainly motivated uh, by the wish to help humankind or by a pure scientific curiosity and the thrill of discovering new things. But what really governs the history of science is all kinds of political, economic, and ideological interests. Science is governed by politics and economics for the very simple reason that science, or at least most of science, is a very expensive affair. If you're a, a doctor, a biologist, who is uh, trying to understand cancer, you need, in order to do it, you need laboratories, you need test tubes, you need microscopes, you need lab assistants, electricians, plumbers, cleaners, secretaries, and so forth. If you're an economist and you try to understand uh, what to do in an economi economic crisis, so you need to collect a lot of data about the economy. You need helpers, you need computers to store the data, you need to develop all kinds of sophisticated data processing programs. If you're an archaeologist and you want to understand the behavior of archaic hunter-gatherers before the agricultural revolution, you need to excavate all kinds of ancient ruins. You need to travel to Africa and to distant lands. You need to date fossilized bones and art artifacts. All these things cost an awful lot of money. For thousands of years, there may have been many people who wanted to study diseases, or the laws of economics, or the lives of hunter-gatherers, but without proper funding, they couldn't reach very far. In the last 500 years, modern science has managed to achieve wonders, thanks largely to the willingness of governments businesses, all kinds of foundations and private donors to channel billions and billions of dollars to scientific research. Without this funding, uh, Galileo and Newton and Darwin would not have uh, reached very far. Now, why did all these governments and private donors start donating so much money, start giving so much money to scientific research? In academic circles, many are naive enough to believe in pure science. They believe that governments or businesses give them money just to pursue whatever strikes their curiosity is interesting. But in fact, most scientific studies that receive funding are funded because somebody believes that they can help attain some economic or political or ideological goal. For example, in the 16th century, Kings and merchants, they channeled enormous resources to finance geographical expeditions around the world, whereas they gave no money to studying, say, child psychology. This is because kings and merchants, they assumed that the discovery of new geographical knowledge could enable them to conquer new lands and to set up trade empires whereas they couldn't see any profit in understanding child psychology better. Similarly, in the middle of the 20th century, Americans and Russians, the governments of the USA and the USSR, they invested enormous resources in the study of nuclear physics, but very little resources in underwater archaeology. Why? Because the governments of, of, the, of the Soviet Union and the United States, they assumed that by understanding the secrets of nuclear physics, they will be able to develop nuclear weapons. 
whereas they didn't see how underwater archaeology could help them win the Cold War or do anything useful, uh, other, anything uh, useful other. Scientists themselves are not always aware of the political, of the economic, of the religious interests that control the flow of money. Many scientists sincerely act just from intellectual curiosity. However, it's very rare that scientists by themselves dictate the agenda of, uh, of science. The agenda is dictated by whoever gives the money. Even if we want to finance pure science, which is unaffected by political or ideological or economic interests, it would be impossible to, to do such a thing. Because the, the crucial thing you need to understand is that the resources of humankind are limited. The resources of every state, of every society, of every university are limited. Deciding what to do with our limited resources requires that we answer basic questions such as what is more important, this or that? What is good, this or that? In order to, to know what to finance. And questions such as what is good and what is more important are not scientific questions. They are ethical questions. Science can only explain what exists in the world, how things work, and what might be in the future. But, by definition, science has uh, no ability uh, to, uh, to answer ethical questions. It has no pretensions to knowing what should be in the future. Only religions and ideologies give answers to such questions about what is good, what is more important, what should be done. Consider, for example, the following uh, dilemma. Let's say that there are two biologists from the same department who has exactly the same professional skills and both of them apply to get a million dollar grant to finance their current research projects. One professor, Professor A, wants to study a disease that infects the udders of cows causing a 10% reduction in the uh, milk production of, of dairy cows. The other professor, Professor B, wants to study whether cows suffer mentally when they are separated from their calves by the dairy industry. Now, assuming that the amount of money uh, is, not, is not unlimited, you cannot finance everything, and assuming that you can't finance both these projects, which one of them should receive the million dollar grant? There is no scientific answer to these questions. This question has only political or economic or religious or ideological answers. There is no way, there is no say, there is no uh, uh, equation that you solve this mathematical equation and, and you know where, sh where the money should go, to this project or to that project, and you know what project is more important. In today's world, it's pretty obvious that Professor A has a much better chance of getting the money than Professor B. Not because other diseases in cows are scientifically more interesting or more important than the mentality of cows but because the dairy industry, which stands to benefit from this research, has much more political and economic power than, say, the animal rights lobby, which may like to finance uh, the, second, uh, the second project. The only way that in today's world Professor B might be able to win the grant is if she can show that her uh, project can have economic benefits. For example, Professor B might write in her application for the grant that when cows are depressed, it leads to a decrease in milk production. If we understand the mental world of dairy cows, we can develop all kinds of new psychiatric medications for dairy cows that will improve their mood and thereby raise milk production by, say, 10%. 
and I estimate that there is an annual market of $250 million each year for psychiatric medications for dairy cows. In, if she writes such a thing, then she, can, uh, she has a good chance of getting uh, the grant. The crucial fact that we need to realize is that science is unable to set its own priority. There is no scientific way of deciding which project is more interesting or more important. The priorities are always set by the political and economic system for political and economic reasons. Another thing is that science is incapable not only of determining its agenda, but also of determining what to do with its discoveries. For example, from a purely scientific viewpoint, it is unclear what to do with our increasing knowledge of genetics. Should we use this new knowledge in order to cure science, to create a race of genetically engineered supermen, or perhaps to engineer dairy cows with supersized others? It's very obvious that with exactly the same scientific discovery, say in genetics, a liberal government, a communist government, a Nazi government, and a capitalist business would use exactly the same discovery for completely different purposes. And there is no scientific reason to say that one usage or one purpose is better than another purpose because science does not deal with purposes. It has no morality of its own. In short, scientific research can flourish only when it has some an alliance with some religion or some ideology. The ideology justifies the cost of the research. It determines where the money should go. And in exchange, the ideology influences the scientific agenda and determines what to do with the discoveries. It's not the scientists who determine these things. Hence, in order to comprehend the cause of the scientific revolution, it is not enough to survey the thoughts and, and lives and achievements of famous scientists like Galileo Galilei or, or Newton or Darwin. In order to really understand the development of science in the last few centuries, we have to take into account the ideological, the political, and economic forces that shaped the agenda of physics and biology and sociology and archaeology and pushed them in certain directions while neglecting other directions. Two forces in particular uh, require our attention. If you want to understand modern science, you must take account of two very important forces that shaped science. One is European imperialism, and the second is capitalism. As we shall see in the following lessons, the feedback loop between science, empires, and capitalism has arguably been the chief motor of history for the last 500 years. In the next lesson, we will take a close look at the relations between modern science and the European empires. Later on, in the next lesson after that, we will examine how both science and the European empires were related to the capitalist economy.